Welcome back to our series of lectures on writing GUIs in Scala. Uh, for this one we're going to learn how to use panels. So we saw previously that we could create a GUI by, throwing, by making a mainframe, uh, putting various elements inside of it, uh, and then setting the frame to be visible. This retains some of the code from the previous video where we wrote a simple text editor. Uh, one of the challenges we ran into was the fact that the contents in a frame only gets to hold one thing. And to get around this, we use pan, uh, panels and panes. And for this uh, video, we're going to talk about the use of panels. So instead of throwing up a single button, uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to use one of the standard panels. Uh, we'll start with the grid panel. Um, and grid panel, as the name kind of implies, builds a grid. Now, the thing about a grid panel is it is very simple. All of the grid elements are the same size. Okay? So, so you don't have a lot of control over that. Uh, what we'll see is that to build more um, intricate GUIs, instead of having panels that are very complex, you use multiple panels and nest them in various ways. And so, when you build a grid panel, you tell it how many rows and how many columns you want. And in this case, I am going to create a 2x2 two two grid. So we have a total of four elements, and inside of the grid panel, we add things to the uh, into the grid. Now the thing about the first panels that we're going to talk about is that where things are located is based upon the order in which they're added. So to demonstrate this, we'll create a new label. So labels are plain text uh, that you can add into the GUI. Uh, we'll make a button, and this button won't do anything. Uh, we'll also make a new text field, and um, how about we make a new combo box, that's something that we haven't seen before, and when you make a combo box, you pass it a, uh, a sequence. It can be an array or a list uh, or other types of sequences that has the things that you want to show up in the combo box. So, um, so why don't we start with something like that. So here you can see that the label comes in here, our button is here, this is the text field where we can input things, and we have our combo box with the various options on it, all of which are equal in size, and if we resize the window, they all go to uh, equal sized pieces into whatever size there is there. Uh, the second panel that we can consider is instead of the grid panel, it is the box panel. Now, as with before, if you want to know how to, to make these things, you can go and you can look in the API. So for example, we might go look at the grid panel and that would tell you that when you build it, you pass it how many rows and how many columns you want. The box panel, when you build it, you pass it an orientation. And there is an orientation object inside of uh, Scala Swing. And so we can build a box panel and pass it orientation dot, I'll make this vertical. There's also 
an orientation dot horizontal if I can spell ori. Okay. And if we run this, you see that the GUI that pops up looks something you know, like this. Um, actually, you know what? It is probably worth commenting out the setting the size. To see what this does, if you just let it naturally pack itself. Okay, so here we have the natural packing, the label, the click, the text field, and unfortunately, we lost the combo box completely in that. Um, the box lays things out, one element after the other, either vertically or horizontally, and typically gives everything as much space as it uh, needs. Actually, um, let's... The reason why we lost the combo box was actually, once again, because of order. We saw in a previous video that setting the size before the contents, you lose the size. Here, the problem is that we're setting the menu bar after the contents, and setting the contents repacks the window. Setting the menu bar then takes up some of that space and causes us to lose that one element. So if we move this after, the menu bar but before the size and we run this again you see that here is our combo box here is the text field the click and the label and they each have just as much space as they want here when we force the window to be larger uh, the text field expanded um, but the general rule is that this is going to take as much space as each element needs for them to be stacked uh, or laid out in the orientation that you ask for. A third panel is called the flow panel. And the flow panel does not need any uh, arguments. The way it lays things out here is kind of like the way that words would go in a word processor. So you can see if I make this uh, very narrow that the label goes on the first line and other stuff goes below it. If I make it narrower still, things get pushed even further. So the way that it that it works is very much like what would happen if you started typing words into a word processor. They go across a single row as long as they can. If they run out of room, it goes to the next row. If it runs out of room again, it goes to the next row. And as was mentioned before, for all of these, let's, we'll go ahead and show what happens if we set back the size for the flow panel. You get a result like that. Our text field is teeny tiny. Uh, I don't know if I managed to click on that there. Okay, I did. Uh, when we resize the window, it automatically uh, resets this. Clearly, this is not how you would want to design a, a GUI. You would want to do something to force this text field to, to take up a bit more space. Um, the three that we talked about, the grid panel, the box panel, and the flow panel, the locations of things have been determined by the rules of the panel type and by the order in which things were added to the contents. The fourth panel that we will consider using and that we will use on a regular basis is a little bit different. It is the border panel. Now, the border panel, instead of adding things to the contents, we're going to add to a layout. Now, contents is used in the situation where where things go is strictly dependent upon the order in which they're added. Layouts are used when you need to provide additional information. So the way the border panel works is that it divides your space up into five regions. A north region, a south region, a west region, an east region, and then a center region. And instead of adding to the contents, we add to layout. 
And what you are supposed to add to layout is not just a single component, like what we had before, but a tuple of a component and a location. Now the location is specified, so under border panel, there is a position. And for example, if I wanted this label to go in the north, I could do that. This is a long name, and I don't want to have to type in border panel dot position dot something four times here. So I'm actually going to add an import statement. And this is the first time that we have ever put a an import statement in the middle of a file. But Scala allows you to do this. It is perfectly happy uh, with doing this. Um, So what I've done here, I don't have an element to add to the east in this case since we only had four. I've put the label in the north and the text field in the south. And they will take as much room as they can uh, from side to side and as much room as they want from top to bottom. So if we look at this, the label only wants this much space top to bottom and it spans the entire width. The text field down here spans the entire width again and takes just enough space for it. The button takes just enough horizontal space and it takes everything vertically except for what was taken by the north and the south. If I had something in the uh, east it would be doing the same type of thing. And then the combo box which is in the center gets everything that is left over. If we resize this you can see that the north and the south shrink horizontally, the east and the west wind up shrinking vertically, and the center just gets smaller. So that's the way in which the border panel works. Now we can put these things together to build up a more complex uh, GUI because inside of each one of these locations in a border panel or inside of the positions in a grid panel, we can put other panels. So I can make a grid panel that has another, uh, that has a border inside of it and have a flow inside of that. We can nest things to arbitrary depth, whatever is needed to create the look and the effect that we want so that things are, are resized properly. There is one more panel that we're not really going to talk about. It's called a grid bag panel. Uh, like the border panel, it uses a layout because you have to specify additional information. The grid bag panel is, is more complex um, and the information that you have to specify is not just a simple north, south, east, west, center. So we're going to ignore it uh, for this point. Feel free to refer to the API uh, to find information on how to use that. So in the next video, we will look at how we can take different panels, nest them inside of one another to create different effects. And then after that, we'll look at panes, which can do a similar type of thing.